Hygiene Regulation students and welcome to the next lecture on transcription and RNA processing. In this lecture, we will look at the structure of a gene in more detail and we'll explain RNA processing as well with regard to 5' prime capping and polyadenylation. The concepts of splicing will be discussed in the next lecture. We ended the previous lecture by discussing the process of transcription initiation. And now we'll discuss how the RNA polymerase travels along the DNA strand in order to promote transcription of an mRNA. In the previous lecture, we discussed how transcription factor 2H phosphorylates serine 5 of the RNA polymerase. And that results in initiation of transcription. However, after transcribing the first 20 to 30 bases, the RNA polymerase pauses on the DNA strand. It is during this time that the RNA is capped, and we'll discuss the process of 5' prime capping in detail in the next few slides. After the RNA is capped, PTFB, which is another kinase, is recruited to the RNA polymerase. PTEFB is responsible for phosphorylating the RNA polymerase on serine 2. After this phosphorylation event, the RNA polymerase can then continue with the process of elongation and move along the DNA strand to transcribe the mRNA. As RNA polymerase 2 continues with the process of elongation, it's involved in recruiting other chromatin modifying complexes. For example, Pol2 can recruit a histone acetyl transferase. The histone acetyl transferase is involved in acetylating histones in the nucleosomes ahead of the RNA polymerase. This results in displacement of the nucleosome and allows for the RNA polymerase to continue traveling along the DNA strand to transcribe DNA into RNA. A protein called facilitates chromatin transcription can associate with the displaced nucleosome. The fact protein acts as a chaperone and it's involved with moving the nucleosome from the position ahead of the RNA polymerase to a position behind the RNA polymerase. The FACT protein is also involved with deacetylating the histones on the nucleosome. Once these histones are deacetylated, they can then reassociate with the DNA behind the RNA polymerase, which results in recoiling of that DNA behind the RNA polymerase. And this process occurs repeatedly until the RNA polymerase transcribes the entire mRNA. During the process of transcription, an mRNA is prepared for the following process of translation. And these post-transcriptional processes are involved with preparing the mRNA for translation. Post-transcriptional modifications include 5' prime capping, polyatailing, and mRNA splicing, and each of these processes are regulated. We'll now discuss 5' prime capping and polyatailing. A 5' prime cap is the addition of a guanine residue that is not produced during DNA transcription to be added to the 5' prime end of the RNA strand. This guanine base is not attached in the regular manner as you would see nucleotide to nucleotide binding in a standard RNA molecule. The 5' prime cap differs in that it binds to the first transcribed base in a 5' prime to 5' prime bond as opposed to a 3' prime to 5' prime bond. This process is catalyzed by an enzyme called guanylyl transferase. So the ribose sugar of the guanine residue binds to the ribose sugar of the neighboring or the first base of the mRNA. In addition to the 5' prime 5' prime bond formed of the guanine base in the 5' prime cap, this guanine is also methylated at position 7. This reaction is catalyzed by guanine methyltransferase. So let's consider the fact that mRNAs that are transcribed are being prepared for translation. And these post-transcriptional modifications are what 
promotes translation of the mRNA into a protein. The 5' cap is important due to the fact that ribosomes are able to recognize and bind to the 5' cap in order to promote translation of this RNA into protein. In addition to the 5' cap that's added to the 5' end or the start of the mRNA strand, the end of the mRNA strand is polyadenylated. And we call this process poly-A tailing. The transcription termination site is an AUAA sequence that is formed close to the end of the mRNA sequence. The RNA polymerase will continue transcribing RNA beyond the AUAA site until it encounters a GU-rich region. The CPSF protein is called cleavage and polyadenylation specific factor can bind to the AUAAA site. As the RNA polymerase continues transcribing, it will encounter a GU-rich region. The cleavage stimulation factor, CSTF, is able to bind to this GU-rich region. It is these two factors that are involved in cleaving that RNA molecule and promoting formation of a poly-A tail. The CPSF and CSTF proteins can align with each other and cause a fold in the RNA molecule due to their binding. This loop region of the mRNA or the nascent mRNA molecule can be cleaved by an endonuclease. This endonucleolytic cleavage results in termination of the RNA strand approximately 100 to 300 nucleotides downstream of the AUAAA site. Once this RNA is cleaved, CPSF recruits a poly-A polymerase. The poly-A polymerase then adds a few hundred A residues to the end of the RNA tail. And this process is called RNA tailing or poly-A tailing. The residue of RNA that's bound by CSTF is then degraded. So due to the loop that's formed due to binding of CPSF and CSTF, there is a long region of DNA downstream from the AUAAA site. And so the position of the poly-A tail after the transcription stop site is quite a few hundreds of base pairs downstream. The poly-A tail is important because it prevents degradation of the mRNA strand and therefore regulates the efficiency of translation. The reason that this poly-A tail can prevent degradation of the mRNA molecule is because it's able to associate with numerous other factors or proteins that can bind to it, preventing degradation of this mRNA. And of course, this regulates translation efficiency because translation is dependent on the presence of mature mRNAs. RNAs that encode histone proteins do not undergo polyadenylation. These RNAs can be protected from degradation by forming a loop structure at the end of the RNA molecule. And so this is important to note that not all mRNAs are poly-A tailed. This brings us to the end of our lecture on 5' prime capping and poly-A tailing. And we will discuss the concept of mRNA splicing and export of these mRNAs into the cytoplasm for protein translation in the next lecture. Thank you.